Ever since 2012 and the release of the Galaxy S3, Samsung has absolutely been killing it with selling smartphones. But HTC's new M8 and its premium build looks to combat Samsung's S5 and its wide array of features like the fingerprint sensor and heart rate monitor. How does the HTC One M8 stack up to the Galaxy S5? Let's find out. The M-Case hybrid bumper case and AmFilm screen protectors for the Galaxy S5 are on sale now. Use coupon code GADGET15 for another 15% off your order. Links are in the description. Physically, the HTC One is one of the best made phones on the market. The aluminum construction and intense attention to detail makes it easily worth the price tag. The new M8 is actually crafted out of 90% aluminum which means it covers around the curves and it just feels ultra premium. Samsung on the other hand again has decided to use the more traditional plastic material like it did on the previous generation Galaxy devices, but this one is slightly different. It has more of a perforated soft touch material, which I would say is a step up. And even though everyone likes to hate on Samsung's plastic, it does have some pluses. It won't scratch and scuff as easy as the M8 and it allows for a removable backplate and improved grip. When it comes to pricing and availability, both the HTC One M8 and Galaxy S5 will cost $199 in the US with a contract and are available in 16 and 32 GB variants. It is important to note that they each have support for expandable storage via microSD card up to 128 GB. Adding on, the M8 can be picked up in silver, black, and gold variants, while the Galaxy S5 can be bought in blue, black, white, and gold. And each device is available on all the major carriers in the US, so that is always a good thing. Probably my favorite feature on the HTC One M8 is the front-facing speakers. While boom sound is nothing new, this iteration ups the volume by 25% without lowering the audio quality. For me, the Galaxy S5 speakers again were a bit of a disappointment. They're located on the back of the device in an ideal location to be covered up, which makes getting the full media experience on the S5 quite tough if you don't plan on using earbuds or headphones a ton. The HTC One's 5-inch display is just stunning. The full 1080p resolution comes in at 440 pixels per inch, colors are vibrant, crisp, and not oversaturated. The Galaxy S5's 5.1-inch on the other hand is also great. In fact, it's actually probably one of the best I've ever used. While viewing angles aren't great outdoors, when in good light, the display on the S5 simply can't be beat. The new HTC One runs 4.4.2 KitKat with its own custom skin overlaid. Since 6.0 brings some cool new features like motion launch, which lets you get the gestures to unlock your phone. For example, double tapping will just unlock it, swiping down will go to the dialer app, and etc. Another cool feature that I've enjoyed experimenting with is the Fitbit app. The HTC One utilizes the so-called smart sensors that allow the One to track steps exactly the same way your Fitbit does. And for those that don't want to have to wear a fitness tracking device or always end up losing them, it is a really convenient feature. Overall, Sense 6.0 is an ultra-fast experience and it adds some pretty useful features to the table. Now moving on to the Galaxy S5 which utilizes Samsung's TouchWiz over Android 4.4.2 KitKat. I've never been a huge fan of TouchWiz and I'm going to be honest, I'm still not really now. But something new that TouchWiz has recently introduced is Magazine UX and it is powered by Flipboard. Magazine UX basically lets you add new home screens that act like Flipboard and that you can choose from a bunch of different categories and literally swipe through them to find what you're interested in. But of course you can also add social networks and other apps to put in like Facebook or YouTube. In some ways it's actually a bit like HTC's Blink feed. But to be honest, the main feature I actually use and really enjoy on TouchWiz is multi-window. The name is pretty self-explanatory for this one as it lets you use two apps at the same time. For example, you could be watching a YouTube video and taking notes at the same time. It's super convenient and without a doubt my favorite feature on the S5. And while I'm usually not a huge fan of TouchWiz, this has been a slight step up and there's definitely tons of potential. There's also a couple new features on the Galaxy S5 like the fingerprint scanner and also heart rate monitor. I'm not exactly sure how accurate the heart rate monitor was, but I did find that the fingerprint sensor was really accurate. To be honest though, I'm still not really convinced on how realistic these are in real world situations since I didn't really find myself using them. When it comes to battery life, the M8 rocks a deceptively small 2600mAh battery. And while that might not sound like a lot, it easily powers through a full 14 hours of heavy usage and a good several hours of on-screen time. HTC has also added a cool new power saving feature that you can turn on if you're ever in serious need for a battery boost. The S5 on the other hand boasts a slightly larger 2800mAh battery that lasted me just about as long as the M8's. And like HTC, Samsung has implemented its own special software to maximize battery performance when low on juice. Now the final thing we're going to cover is the camera performance. The M8 has a 4 megapixel camera, while the S5 has a 16 megapixel camera. Generally speaking, the S5 will produce sharper images when blown up, but if you don't plan on doing much cropping or taking pictures off your phone and then moving them to the computer, the M8 will be more than sufficient. 
Also, thanks to the new Duo camera, the M8 is capable of producing some awesome new effects such as U-Focus that allows the picture to be refocused after the fact, and there's also some other cool things like 3D effect. The Galaxy S5 rocks a 60 megapixel camera and can also shoot video at 4K, so that is pretty incredible, especially considering the price point of this device. And when you can get one, buy one get one free, it's pretty amazing. The only problem here is that there is no optical image stabilization, so if you want to check out our 4K video recording, then you can do that in the link in the description. The HTC One M8 is a great device. It features the new Sense 6.0, superb build quality, and a great display. The S5 offers a new cleaner touch whiz, great specs, and a removable battery. For me, I do prefer the M8s, but which is best for you? That just has to be made for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and also remember to subscribe for more content on the S5, and also the HTC One M8. This has been Chad from GadgetGuruHD.com, and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.